listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after show entertainment. Very good, the AfterBuzz Studios in Los Angeles, California, presented by Maria Menounos and Bing.com, and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies, this is AfterBuzz TV's Smash After Show. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest news and gossip. If you'd like to buzz in on tonight's show, you can buzz us at 424-256-1729. That's 424-256. 256-1729. And now, another post-game wrap-up show for your favorite TV show. It's AfterBuzz TV's Smash After Show. Hey, everybody. Bing is for doing, and we are here doing another episode of Smash, Season 1, Episode 5. I am Tamara Berg. I'm joined in the studio by Kendra Cabasal, Sarah Mendoza, and Ronnie Jr. in the booth. How's everybody doing tonight? Great. Great. A lot better. <laughs> We're I glad that you're back. <laughs> we you. missed you last She's week. She's fully Thank recovered you. from yes. her. And I, it's like I over-recovered. I'm, over, like I'm not tired. <laughs> I'm ready to... I could use some of your energy alien. right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm totally crashing from the coffee that I had earlier. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. That happens. That happens. You, you know, Monday's a marathon. Mondays are marathons for us. Mm-hmm. So, and it's, yeah. it's a bit of a beginning of the week, but we do get to end the day with being together and talking about Smash. Yes. And um, <laughs> uh, we'll, 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 get to the, we'll get to the end in the end, or at least in a little bit. But my favorite thing of the night was we watched all in a line the three of us do and I was on one end and Sarah was in the middle and I run the remote and so I was running the remote and I look over at the two of you at the end and you're both like this <gasps> <laughs> like I it was hilarious and I so wished I had my phone with me but I knew it wasn't gonna last long enough to be able to dig it out and you're just, <gasps> it was shocking we were shocked and you sat there for like 15 seconds we were trying to absorb frozen in it. time yeah, yeah trying to absorb <laughs> <laughs> Talk about a cliffhanger, though. I this know it was, was good, but next interesting. week, interesting. Mm-hmm. Yes. Interesting. We have much to talk about tonight, so let's start off talking about Ivy and Karen. <sighs> so they're continuing the rivalry. They're really pushing it. Karen, it seems to be in the power position, mm-hmm. though, in this situation, don't you think? Yes, mm-hmm. I yeah. think she always has been. But yeah, she's a more she's noble person. Okay, yeah. I, l- I think in we probably this. need to sort of establish you are team, team Karen, and you are team. I'm Team Ivy, but I'm, I'm disappointed in Ivy. I think. Yeah, now. You're, you're, she's really, you're really she's considering your loyalty. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, you're kind of reconsidering your loyalty tonight. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, I'm for <laughs> Team Karen, bet. and I think I've I haven't said it directly, but I think it's been kind of obvious yeah. for a little while. <laughs> I love Karen too. I just was really pushing for for Ivy, Ivy. just because I love her as a performer. Yes. Um, She's really disappointing me. So what is it about her that's disappointing you in this particular she's, episode? Uh, she's just, <laughs> she's letting her insecurities rule her actions. Mm, yes, she's, she is. She's mm-hmm. being very reactive and defensive and even off- offensive with Karen, mm-hmm. you know? And like she's going out of her way to try and belittle and under- undermine Karen just to secure her part, you know, her role as Marilyn. Right. She thinks it's helping. Yet at the same time, Karen works on her insecurities and it works out perfectly. No, yeah, mm. I, I agree. <laughs> yeah. I, I, ag- I agree with you that Karen's handling yeah. it in the right way. Yes. She doesn't even I'm have the saying. part. Well, but she's, she's in a much lesser, uh, pr- less pressure position, Karen is. You know, she, right. has, yeah. she has everything to gain by just, you know, doing her job, showing up, mm-hmm. being, being the brilliant performer that she is. And Ivy has everything to lose. Mm-hmm. Right. So it's, you know, it's it's a really, it, it's, I'd say, an easier position for Karen to be in, being the new kid, yeah. being the, you know, it's always better to be the underdog. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, but, but she's also going out of, she's going out of her way to be the bigger person. Mm-hmm. She's, she's providing encouragement even to Ivy as she sees that Ivy is having this challenging time right now, right. dealing with Derek, dealing with possibly losing the part, not feeling good enough. Right. And she's trying to, you know, help her out. Just right. as, you know, a fellow... Even, even though it's awkward. And yeah, she's, even though it's mm-hmm. awkward. 
Um, whereas Ivy, she's not even accepting these, you know, Karen's attempts at trying to create some friendship. She's rejecting it and not only that, belittling her mm -hmm. in the process. Well, I think that's pretty typical behavior for, uh, as we call them at my house, wactresses. Um, <laughs> you know, the, because because the entire, um, the, the, the basis of being an actor one has to be very self-focused. Mm -hmm. so, you know, some people would say self-centered. I would say self-focused. I mean, you've really got to be clear about who you are, where where your strengths are, where mm -hmm. your weaknesses are, because they're because you're expressing yourself, and it's always a, a, it's always a reflection of who you really are, as right. opposed to the job you do. There's so, there's not a lot of separation between who you really are mm -hmm. and the job that you do when when you're an actor. And so, your insecurities are constantly being, um, I'm not you know battled, challenged, and right. and, and challenged, yeah. Yeah. yeah, all the time. And so. It's it's an extreme. Well, I don't do it anymore, you know. <laughs> so it's, it's an extremely difficult position to be in because, and these girls are young, you know. They haven't been through. Uh, Ivy's been on Broadway for ten years, but you know, you th thankfully gain security and and a sense of self as you get older. But mm -hmm. when you're very young, it's it's a little more precarious of a scenario. Right. So, you know, it's right. kind of a hard position to be in. Yeah. Right. And one of the things that I found interesting in what I was reading this week was the song that they were talking about, the um, Let's Be Bad mm -hmm. song. Megan Hilty was talking about the the later version of it where they were doing the full production number. She was saying it's it's a really challenging thing to do because it's me playing Ivy playing Marilyn on drugs. Right. Right. You know, and so you have to. There's, there's so there's, many layers. Exactly. Yeah. 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 So many layers to doing it. And. Um, and it's it's a really complex thing to do. Mm -hmm. So why does Karen have it kind of down? Well, because pat, she, she's like, not playing she's not playing Marilyn. Yeah, no, I mean when, not really. When she is like whenever she's told to step up and you know sing this happy birthday. Sing, how come she can jump right into it and? Uh, but I it, think she's you know? she's more she's she brings a lot of herself into Marilyn. You know, like I still see her as Karen even when she's performing those songs Marilyn songs Absolutely I agree with that. Um mm -hmm. I don't see like this full transformation. She's she's talented as Karen. Right. And that's who I see. Do you see Marilyn with Ivy? I do see more of um Ivy changing herself to fit that role. Uh-huh. I mean lately I've been opinion. seeing more Ivy than Marilyn in Ivy's performance, and that could be just that could oh, be on really? purpose. Yeah, 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 it absolutely could yeah. be because I mm -hmm. think she, you know, she is kind of succumbing to her insecurities. Right, mm -hmm. it's kind of showing through. Right, except for when she nailed it with the. Uh, it was let's be let's bad, be right? bad. Yeah, but right. even in that, she's playing a drunkard. She's playing, you know, <laughs> Marilyn as a drunk mm -hmm. um, right. in that song. So there's an her being unkempt and or her being disheveled in the episode is parallel to right. Marilyn being right. disheveled in mm -hmm. the song. Right. Um, yeah, and a lot yeah. of people work that way. You know, they need to sort of break themselves down in order to bring themselves back up and, mm -hmm. and acting teachers do that and things like that as well. Mm -hmm. So that you can find where you are so that so that your portrayal is more true and right. not a caricature and not a cartoon of so Marilyn. And that's, that, I think, the big challenge That's that. another question then. Mm -hmm. Is Derek belittling her on purpose? Right. Well, that was sort of what I was getting at. I yeah. think he might be. Yeah. It could be. Because maybe he, he tried that. He attempted to kind of uh, manipulate Karen and she didn't fall for it. Right. But it works so well with Ivy. Right. You know, he builds her up, he play, you know, apologizes, mm -hmm. then he, you know, mm -hmm. knocks her down and it, it's it been working for her. Right. So I don't know. I don't know if he's doing it on purpose. I guess we'll find out along the way. I guess we will. I <laughs> guess we will. I don't know. Well, what, do you, what do you guys think? I, I mean, I think absolutely that could be the 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 motivation that he has but if they if they are doing that it's extremely subtle you know yeah sorry i i just thought it was kind of blatant today but i don't know if it's you know well it he, he's he's it's blatant that he's breaking her down and that he's being kind of rude to her but yeah if he's doing whether or not he's doing it to get a performance out of her is what mm -hmm. I'm saying is, oh, is right. more subtle. Yeah. He yeah. just seems like that with everybody though. I, I, Even when yeah. he's trying to get Karen to sing, 
um, yeah. um, show you know show Ivy how to how it's done. Uh-huh. He's yelling at Barking her the whole at time. Her. Mm-hmm. He just seems like he's that type of guy. He's he's the drill sergeant type of teacher and right. leader. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, so I don't know. I don't know if it's you know to manipulate her into that role. Um, it's a possibility because he just seems like he's one of those guys that's going to take, you know, do whatever he can to make his show amazing. A success. Mm-hmm. A success so mm-hmm. that in the end they can get the, you know, make the dough. Right. Right. Well, that's his job. That's <laughs> right. his job for sure. And right. it, would, it would change his life if, it, if Marilyn the Musical was a huge mm-hmm. smash, mm-hmm. as it were. <laughs> um, what do you think about Karen doing the dress up you know dressing in the dress playing the the vixen vixen. with this guy getting info from him and her her conversation that was going on about Um, you him objectifying her and all that kind of stuff yeah i was uncomfortable watching really (laughs) yeah just (laughs) because i'm team karen and team respect for yourself and at first i wasn't sure what where she was going with it mm-hmm. i didn't know if she was doing it because of rj and she was jealous of her you boyfriend. mean she was talk- are you talking about the press secretary yeah scene? okay i didn't know you know if she because she was bumped to that table mm-hmm. I, I wasn't sure what was going on and then it was clear she was doing it for her boyfriend mm-hmm. um yeah i was a little bit is that wait is that why i'm sorry for interrupting is that why you were uncomfortable because you weren't sure what her motivation was yeah mm-hmm. I, I, I i agree i felt yeah. the same way i was like wait a second is she drunk right now herself yeah. <laughs> and she's because hitting on this guy she kept going i thought she would have stopped at her sarcastic remark about mm-hmm. you know the dress and whatever you, you like that and all that and then she kind of kept going and was like oh i'll be in touch Right. I knew I, I knew like, from no, the I knew from the beginning that that she was working him. Really? Yeah, from the very from but the minute she, she started didn't know doing immediately it. who he was. I thought she was no, but I felt like she was doing character work, kind of. You know, I mean, um, she was basically mm-hmm. trying him out as a guy because because there'd been the conversation in rehearsal about you know Marilyn being objectified and how people see her, and then her she had the conversation with uh, Dev. Yeah. Thanks for taking your shirt off, Deb. Mm. Um, <laughs> I know when that Deb. happened, we both looked at you like, yeah. mm-hmm. <laughs> she was cheering. <laughs> His shining moment. Yes, that was funny. <laughs> it's nice. It's a little eye candy. I like that. <laughs> um, so anyway, then she's talking to Deb and saying, you know, what, now I have to wear a sexy dress for you, and isn't that mm-hmm. what Marilyn went through? So I thought she was just kind of doing, like I said, character work and kind of trying to get in the in the spirit of it. So, yeah. so that then when she's doing it, sorry, there's something itching my nose. So then when she's doing it on the ship at the dinner, it was very clear to me that she was just, for whatever reason she was doing it, she was not being herself and it wasn't because she was trying to pick up some dude because right. hot boyfriend was 15 feet away. Yeah, but too. I thought my mind, my mind went straight to the RJ girl, the, uh, the yeah, 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 and I thought... She was just immediately trying to get back at him or something, but but we've never just, seen them either of them do anything like that before, right? Which so is, that was, I was like, uh oh. That as I soon just as she, yeah, I was just sure. Well, I mean, as soon um, aside from that scene, uh-huh. as soon as we met RJ, I was like, uh oh. Yeah. Because remember how we said, well, how I the, said, yeah. that they were not too so perfect. That relationship was too perfect b- before that point. You yeah. know, then then you're thinking, oh you know what, maybe he's not so perfect. Right. Maybe something could be going on. Mm-hmm. Or will. Mm-hmm. Or I don't think, will. I don't think or anything or, is Oh, yet. I've said from the very beginning, they are going to break my heart. Yeah. I just know it. Yeah. I know they will. Yeah. I know they will. Because 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 being perfect is boring, <laughs> if for no other reason. The two of them being right. perfect and just loving each other is going to be too boring to watch. So mm-hmm. we need to have some conflict and drama there. Had, but, he, had he rejected her in the limo, then... I think then I would have suspected that mm-hmm. something was going on. But he didn't reject her, so I was like, okay. And that was funny. Safe. How awkward for that limo driver. <laughs> I know. <laughs> screen, no, sir. Yeah, no, no screen. He's like, he as like, we were. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, oh, well, he'll just have to. Like, that driver hasn't seen that before, <laughs> you know? <laughs> He's like, no, and he was like smiling. Everyone was being bad <laughs> mm-hmm. in this episode. Right. Mm-hmm. Staying true to the <laughs> title of this episode. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Let's be bad. <laughs> now, what about Karen? I mean, Ivy crying at rehearsal. Do you think that was a put on or do you think that was real? Uh, I think that was real. I think, yeah. I think yeah. she's very frustrated yeah. um, in this episode just because, well, first of all, Derek did embarrass her yes. at that rehearsal. Mm-hmm. Yes. And it wasn't just with anyone else. She He... Again, they're pitting Karen and Ivy against each yeah. other. Not only does he say like is he's saying that she's not good at singing that song, but she's he's telling her that her rival or the person she's competing against is the one that should be teaching her how to yeah, do it. Yeah, that's 
mortifying yeah. and yeah. humiliating. Right. Yeah. For sure. And she's put her, you know, heart and soul into this project, into the show. Yeah. And so, of course, it's going to be frustrating for her. She's going to be heartbroken and she's trying so hard and she just sees Derek's face and he doesn't look satisfied. Yeah. You know, of course, so, so of course, it's going to hurt her. Yeah. yeah. And affect well, her emotionally. Yeah. Compounded with mm -hmm. their relationship. And, right. And the right. disregard he has for her. Right. Yeah. And the lack so, of clarity. Yeah. That she has. Yeah. With him. I wonder if he was, you know how he um, was dancing with Karen. Yeah. When Ivy walked in that I suspected he was kind of waiting for Ivy to get there late to, and, to take her off of her. Right. And show her like, hey, you better get on your, you better your a game. Yeah, get on your a game, or else this could happen. Or right? Because he 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 danced with her for a while, almost as if he was just waiting for her to get there. Yeah, to yeah. teach her a lesson. Yeah, yeah. He was yeah. like, he's she a said, manipulator. Am I late? No, Karen was on time. No, Karen yeah. was, Karen early. was <laughs> early. Yes, Karen was early, like mm. usual. Yeah, very <laughs> punctual, uh -huh. that Karen. Uh -huh. Yes, she is. <laughs> Very eager. Yes, she is. So I think we should move on to Leo. Leo the pothead. Yeah. The disappointing pothead. <laughs> the arrest. Who apparently takes after his mother. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. So he didn't get arrested, but he got picked up. The And, you know, Tom is the one who ends up going to bail him out with his with conveniently hunky, conveniently hunky, hunky attorney <laughs> in tow. That was funny. <laughs> That was, yeah, that was interesting. It was so funny watching Tom be like, eh, I'm kind of on the fence about this guy. And then, yeah. and then John was his name. Was that right? I didn't catch his name. I didn't John, catch his I think name it's John. Okay. Um, John starts doing his thing, and all of a sudden Tom just perks He's up like, and, oh, hey. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that was. I go back to my place. <laughs> um, so, anyway, yeah, Leo, Pothead, and. Um, it ultimately affected, well, affected the adoption process. Yeah. There was a hiccup in that. And, uh, what, what was it that I didn't um, get that part? So, Karen, I, Karen called the adoption agency mm -hmm. saying, or you know, Ju Julia. I mean, Julia. Okay. Julia. Sorry, okay. guys. Sorry, I was like, wait. Every single week, I have to write down every person's name and remind myself because a whole week has gone by and God only knows how many names have gone in my head in that time. <laughs> Julia calls what it seemed like the adoption agency or there somebody right. somebody yeah. involved there and said, you know, I just wanted to make sure you're you're clear about what's happened with Leo and I hope that's not going to affect the adoption. Mm -hmm. But the answer she got back was, yeah, it's affecting the adoption. Yeah. But not to the point where it's it, off. It's off, no, right? No, okay. No. Right. But that was where she was kind of clearing it up with Leo and saying, look, you need to understand that you get caught doing this again, that it will affect the rest of your life mm -hmm. and it mm -hmm. will affect the adoption. Right. So it was sort of like the person was giving her a pass, you know, the agency was giving right. her a bit of a pass and mm -hmm. saying, you know, this can't be happening all over the place because mm -hmm. right. then your home won't be suitable. Right. And it was the John, the attorney who kind of helped remove that ding, I think. From, yeah. From the record. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Now talk about, you know, having to maybe learn, you know, the hard way for Leo. All he's wanted is this is his sister. Yeah. And right. to 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 think that maybe you were the reason why you that couldn't happen just from, you know, making a teen mistakes, making smoking some pot in the right. park. But I thought it was odd when he said to her, oh, that's what you care about. Like, I know, it I was. Like, but that's what, but, but that's what he cares yeah. about. <laughs> I was like, right. right. Are we in, did I miss something? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> maybe maybe the, all that marijuana teen. has gone to his head. <laughs> yeah, it's like He's a like, teen angst moment. Like, you don't care about me, Mom. Or, I don't yeah, know. but it, I just, I don't know. It was just a, uh? Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Was, okay. It was actually a little out of character for him to say yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. So that was that was slightly where, confusing. Where is the husband? Oh, he's at some teaching. He's up. in Toronto yeah. at a <laughs> conference or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> Conveniently, Lost. when yeah. Michael Swift comes back, he's mm -hmm, at a conference. Mm -hmm. A brush up class for what was it? Whatever. I didn't even know. I was, <laughs> I was something kind of, to get him out of the picture right. while I was slightly Hansen distracted Michael during Swift this episode. There were things I just missed, and 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 your and, mind was on Dev's shirtless was, uh, shot maybe. that whole time. Maybe. <laughs> but not the rest of the episode. Yeah. So um, Frank is her husband's name, right? Yes. Frank. Frank conveniently out of town. 
Um, <laughs> Julia and Mike. Mike wants to talk about DiMaggio, the DiMaggio character. Mm-hmm. We really need to talk about it. We over need to talk dessert. about it. And we need to and talk about it. not during rehearsal. No. Over, over no. apple pie and ice yes. cream. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes, we do. Right. After. Late. Right. Late late in the evening <laughs> is when late. we need to discuss it. Near either <laughs> your work, house or mine. Right. All work or a hotel. after. Right. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he, he they are a disaster. He's so transparent. Yes. I know. He's such, they are such a disaster. Yeah. Why do you say that? Just because <laughs> a million people are going to be hurt by the two of them. A million. Yeah. Yes. That's going to oh. be. Oh. Are we, are we going and there then, yet? Yeah. Yeah. Are we going there? <laughs> yeah, we are. We're <laughs> okay. going there. We're committing to the Julia. And we are. Michael. As <laughs> if it wasn't scandalous enough pan out from the kiss and we see her son Leo standing there at the window. I hope there was like an awning blocking his view and he was just looking at (laughs) a cat out in the street. (laughs) No. Okay. No, he's a cat and he no. maybe so it's now Julia. or she wakes up and she's like oh, yes. nobody can I find out. A dream. <laughs> so Tom knows. Ellis knows, and now Leo knows. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I don't know how that's gonna. Uh, it's not gonna. Do you like, think Leo's gonna confront her? Yes. Or, or the father? No. no. I think he would talk to his. I think he would talk to his mom. What do you guys think? I'm on the fence. I, I, he may not talk to anyone. He may not say, you know, know how to confront her about it, and he may just keep it to himself for now. Not that we should go into predictions, but I'm just going to predict that maybe what he'll maybe what he'll do is really start acting out now because mm-hmm. he's he mad at his mom. He sees that she's potentially breaking up their family. Mm-hmm. What's the point right. in me trying to stay on the straight and narrow? Mm-hmm. He right. could just become a total pothead. She's lost really... credibility in his eyes. Yeah. Well, because what happened? I, I was like, no, she's not going to break, at least not on this episode. And but two then seconds he said, later, when a guy <laughs> sings to you, you melt. Don't no, you know that? No, as no, soon as she... the first note came out of his mouth, I was like, no. it's over. Oh, Oh, it's, over. it's so over. She's yeah, gonna over. fall for it. <laughs> it was the two buck chuck from Trader Joe's that got her. Right? <laughs> yes, they did mention Trader Joe's. Also, Joe. they were drinking some wine. It. You know, no, I didn't think she was gonna break. <laughs> even though there was kind of some foreshadowing uh-huh. in her conversation with mm-hmm. Frank. Uh-huh. When, was it Tim, uh, Tom. Tim, Tom? Tom. I want to say Tim. Um, he was playing the piano. That in the was background. a hilarious scene. That was I just funny. loved that. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I noticed when she hung up with her husband, she said, Me too. She didn't say, I love I you. I love you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I was like, hmm, That's Uh-oh. a sign. Red flag. Mm-hmm. So even though that happened, I didn't think she was going to kiss um, Ta- to, to I'm Mike. Di- I'm getting Michael. 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 <laughs> Sorry. I'm Mr. Swift. Yes. <laughs> well, he is swift. He is. It's too swift. Anyway. So yeah, was, and this was your reaction. <gasps> <laughs> How did I do no. <laughs> it? was Replay. funny. It was, was funny. It was shocking. I know, it was. But the title of the episode was Let's, let's be, be Bad. Nice. And then Let's Wake Up, and it's a dream. Next mm, episode. She just lost all senses, though. Seriously. Like I said, well, he, when a guy sings to <laughs> no. you, you just fall apart. He was going to just get in the car and leave. And he did that whole... Come back. He, the dramatic right, turnaround. Right. Yeah. I'm yeah. going to come Rushing back to you. To her. <laughs> no, that's when she should have been at the door already closing it behind her. Bye. But right. she yeah. was just standing there like this, staring at yeah. him as he was m- walking away. Yeah. Almost yeah. calling him like, subconsciously to come back over yeah. and kiss yeah. her. Yeah. <laughs> Jeez. Cause, well, because part of her obviously wanted that. And nobody so. yeah. checks doors. Remember when Ellis was outside mm. the door? Nobody looks up to see if their son's hanging out the window. <laughs> She was clearly caught up in the moment. Yeah, she was clearly caught up in the moment. Totally. Um, (laughs) Yeah, it was it it was shocking, but I saw it coming. And oh my um, gosh! And the preview for next week with what's coming for them. (laughs) Yeah, there's there's nakedity. There's There's a lot of stuff. There is nudity. A lot of stuff coming. We had that same reaction. (laughs) (laughs) Wait, Uh, (laughs) nakedity. (laughs) <laughs> I love they're that. naked. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's not de- oh wait, was Dev also naked in the next? <laughs> That's no. just your imagination. Like, I don't no. know. <laughs> I, 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 I think I missed it. <laughs> Wishful thinking. <laughs> no, no, no not on I, my. I part. don't think so because Tamara wouldn't. I would have missed like that. <gasps> <laughs> <laughs> no, it was like okay. a collage of rewind, skin rewind. Yeah, there was a lot of skin. And, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So this was the drunk episode, and next week's going to be the sex episode, yeah. I'm thinking. 
and but. so let's so this week's was let's let's be bad next week will be let's be worse let's be worse <laughs> <laughs> i love that is there a song for that i don't know we'll have to see you know, write an original one about it for next week yeah <laughs> you know michael I, J- michael hits he's, he's so ridiculous irritating okay ridiculous. so God. you know you smell good was one of his lines <laughs> seriously How and then that? he starts singing to her singing. and and then his his big line i want to be with you he really yeah. has no game the only game he has is that amazing voice of his everything else that comes out of his mouth is like a five-year-old telling, <laughs> telling <laughs> he's, he's a bit cliche i like you yeah. he's a bit <laughs> cliche Where's you his family? smell nice nobody like he didn't call home in this episode i'm gonna be at rehearsal till really really late tonight <laughs> that's what he said put the kid to bed by yeah, yourself put, put the baby to bed without me i'm gonna be home really really late <laughs> and it. really really drunk and why does he just show up at her house like that what makes him because he, he was that? drunk because he was drunk <sighs> he was getting wasted with and everybody else. well the other what's gang the relationship with leo and michael well yeah i mean she's known him for a long time he mm. was in he was in one other show, one other show right and when leo was little and mm-hmm. so he was ha- and you know she had the full-blown affair with him back then mm-hmm. so he was probably hanging around a lot mm-hmm. <clears throat> that's what i mean after. i wonder you know like what what is the, was he do, overdoing it with him tonight like buddy buddy right or was it they really have a good relationship well or? do you think leo n- knew they were having an affair when they did five years ago yeah, was it five years ago no. that's what i'm wondering because you know kids have that intuition so i don't mm-hmm. know i don't know but because he could have looked out and was like oh gosh here they here go it again. is again right but leo was very receptive and very friendly with him right. you know very happy to see him all of that if 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 he looked at michael as being a home wrecker i doubt he would right. greet him that way there would have been a tinge of resentment i think if he actually knew i would think so but if he has a well i don't i don't I don't know the full relationship with Leo and his own father. Maybe he right. likes Michael more than he likes his father. I can't imagine that. I don't know. I'm just throwing things out there. Yes, you are. <laughs> I'm, not them them. Fall away, baby. <laughs> I'm not biting. I'm not biting. She's not catching Sorry. it. I'm not. You usually like my. I'm, I know. I know. I do. I do usually like your inside. I just don't. I just don't. <laughs> You're like this not today. <laughs> just not tonight. Usually, but not today. Um, no, it's possible. It is possible. All things are possible. <laughs> Okay, I'm done. Okay, are you? Are yes. you sure? Yes, <laughs> done speculating. Um, for real now. quickly, I just I just want to talk about Tom a little bit because I loved that scene, the the playback of the scene or not yes. the, the interplay of the scene with crap, I Tom? Just Julia, her name. Julia oh, on the phone <laughs> and Tom playing the fakely playing the piano as we learned last week, right. and then um, and you know him him sort of chiming in but he was he was sort of a comic relief character all this episode yeah. you know rolling his eyes at this date their first date was so great second date was kind of sucky and then they have sex and it's wow bad. Bad. Still bad. Bad. <laughs> <laughs> and it was funny, funny and yeah, it was entertaining I, yeah. I enjoyed that and like we already said you know him being turned on by john doing his thing yeah you know? mm-hmm. So now they'll just be friends. Now they know. They tried well, it. Didn't work. Yeah. Or, yeah. Unless, I don't know. They're kind of cute, though, the way that they interact with each other. True. <laughs> True. Yeah, we'll see. Sex isn't everything. Maybe they're going to have a deep spiritual relationship. <laughs> oh, that could happen. Tom and, Tom <laughs> and John. Tom and John. That's, yeah. Hmm. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know either. I don't know either. Um, I think okay. You know, th- then now I want to talk about the music. All right, so let's let's yes. talk about music a little bit. Um, I have, I, I'm really like toward the um, news and gossip because we have some. Oh right. But um, okay, so let's be bad was the main song, which was the original song. Mm-hmm. Um, what'd you think? Thoughts? Um, I loved it. It was. I mean, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed Ivy's performance. Uh huh. And I normally am team. Karen right. performances. Actually, Karen did well too as part of the ensemble. Yes, yes, and, she did. Um, she normally comes out, I think, and overpowers, you know, Ivy's yes. performance. But I think in this one, she kind of held her own in her little um, and, sta- and staying yeah, back. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What do you so. think, Sarah? You liked th- it? Yeah, I thought it was great, and I like that we saw a little bit like scene, a scene from the yes. Maryland. Musical. Oh, yeah. That's the first that we've seen of the scenes. <laughs> no, we've we've, oh, no. we've seen other ones. They just weren't as big as yeah. as long. Yes. Yeah. Them in. 
Yeah. Um, so that was cool. Uh huh. And of course, Ivy or Megan Hilty is amazingly talented and Catherine McPhee. So it's always nice mm-hmm. to see them in full effect in their element on yeah. stage. Yeah. I thought that uh, I I liked the staging of it a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, the one, the uh, a, I don't even want to call it a criticism, but something I'm I'm not in love with yet, with the show is how, and I know this is very Broadway musical, is how you take a song and you begin a little bit of it early in the show, and then you reprise it like if it's going to be your big hit, just before the intermission, mm-hmm. and then you do a great big giant number of it in the second act, right? Mm-hmm. And that's pretty much what they did with that in this show, but. It's, I got so I got so much the sense of the song in the beginning of the episode that the actual singing of the song was sli- a slight letdown to me hmm. when like they the were doing wow the big number. Like the wow factor was a little bit gone. Is what just you're saying. from mm-hmm. just from the standpoint of the song, the the production number was obviously really interesting mm-hmm. to see all the costumes and all of the the business they had going on around the song but the actual reveal of the song was not as climactic as i wanted it to be because i'd heard so much of it early on in the episode Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um and then the the other song that they did that mcphee did was it's a man's 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 i think there are four of them world (laughs) um beautiful song and when they first started saying people who are very close to me and my family know that I tend to recognize songs very quickly if I know them you know the first three tunes I I could be awesome at name that tune if they still had it on the air (laughs) but um so when I heard the first little beginning of the song I thought oh this is gonna be so great because I love her voice Mm -hmm. and so it was a really powerful song and I thought that one was really beautiful did you did that appeal to you guys yeah I yeah, she's, she did a good job. she's saying it very well. Mm-hmm. I was comparing her to Christina Aguilera mm-hmm. in that moment because she had that sound. But mm-hmm. um, it's yeah, it's good... interesting to see her kind of unlock her sexier side because yes. she's so naturally like a reserved, demure, yeah, demure, mm-hmm. more reserved woman. Yes. Um, you can tell. For me, it's like I love Catherine McPhee, but for me, you can tell it's not really her. To be the sex yeah, to kitten. to be the sex yeah. kitten. Well, if that's the case, then moving into the Marilyn Monroe, M- Marilyn Mono- Monroe <laughs> role is going to be a huge challenge for her. Right. Because that because that Marilyn was her the persona that she had mm-hmm. was all about you know sex and appearance and sex appeal. Yeah, I think and, that's what she's working on. Yeah, and I think she's doing well with yeah. the progression. Yeah. Right. You know? In, and doing what you guys said in the red dress, kind of mm-hmm. doing testing it out sort yeah, of. in the field. That's where I thought she she did uh, pull it off and and was sexy when she was talking to the press secretary mm-hmm. and playing uh-huh. the role there. Uh-huh. Yeah. But in the just in the performance of that song, I could tell that it's just not really her to go <laughs> right? that all out right? with yeah. her sexiness, right? Which is fine. Yeah, of course, of um, course. Yeah. But she's good. She's good no matter what. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, she is. <laughs> So then the last song was A Song For You. Oh. Um, that was the Michael's song. The song. The seduction song, yes. <laughs> yeah. The I Want To Be With You, You Smell Good song. I can't, I can't mm-hmm. deal. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> it was, I thought it was beautiful. Oh, yeah. He yeah. was fantastic. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So good. It's and just the situation. Yeah, the I, situation is I'm still awkward. uncomfortable. <laughs> um, but, yeah. But, yeah, he did a great job. Did, and also, I mean, it wasn't a full song, but Happy Birthday, did we want to? Oh, Yeah. To talk about that. Yes, I want you to talk about that. <laughs> Go. Um, so Karen sang "Happy Birthday" um, because Derek kind of alluded to the fact that he'd heard her sing it before. Yes, and we all know where. Yes, um, in the privacy of his own home. Yes, and um, <laughs> while she was straddling him. Yes, if I remember correctly. <laughs> Actually, I I was impressed because I thought she was going to kind of freeze um, in front of everybody watching and in front of um, Ivy watching, but she did a good job. Like she has that vibrato. Yep. Am I saying it right? Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> and uh, I think she did a good job with it again. The, the, there was a moment at the very end, you know, there was a full progression in that song. Mm-hmm. She started being awkward. Mm-hmm. Then she started singing it, you know, properly. Then she got into the Marilyn character. Mm-hmm. And then at the very end, she was she, she was sort of focusing out this way. And then at the very end, she dropped her eyes, looked straight at him, and and delivered the last two or three words of mm-hmm. the song. Mm-hmm. And it was so direct, and it was so um, just just f- full and rich of you know, you're not intimidating me. I can do. There was so much in mm-hmm. that moment, and I thought mm-hmm. that I was really like you, impressed with the whole progression of the yeah. performance. Yeah, 
Yeah, because she could have easily frozen. You know, she. Mm -hmm. it seemed like she was like, wait, what? Do what? No, in front of everyone? You right. Know? Mm -hmm. So um, it was nice to see her kind of step up and, yeah. and take it. She found confidence within the song yeah. as it went on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think in the beginning, too, she was probably just nervous because, like, oh, crap, Ivy's really going to kill me. <laughs> right? <laughs> but bring it. So, um, of course, there's going to be hesitation at the beginning, and, and plus this guy's yelling at you to sing on command, you know? Right. Uh, uh, but you're, I do agree with you guys. She pulled it off. I wonder if it would have been different had, you know, the part of the ensemble not bef befriended her the episode right, before. Right, right. Like, would mm -hmm. she have been, you know. As confident, Yeah, mean? I wonder. Mm -hmm. That would have been interesting to see. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure. I'm not well, sure. And then what do we think about that? They're, they're befriending Karen, but they're right. first and foremost friends with Ivy. It's, right. It's, they're probably going to have to end up choosing Han at one I point. Think so. I don't know. Maybe Ivy's going to ask them to choose. I feel like Ivy would be the type to ask them to choose a side if right? she sees that they're getting buddy-buddy with Karen. I um, feel like Ivy's blinded by all that. Like, she's more focused on Derek than, than the friends in the, mm -hmm. in the ensemble. I, I think so, too. I, I agree with that. Yeah. And she's, she, you know, she does, I think Megan Hilty does a brilliant job of portraying the you know, actress who's trying to be professional at all times, professional at all times, and be, you know, proper and nice, mm -hmm. but still gets her digs in. Just, be but she, but you, I never watch her and go, "What a bitch," no. you know. Yeah, I just kind of go, "Well, uh, oh, yeah, right, okay." It depends on how you want to interpret what she just did. <laughs> right, right, mm -hmm. right. Yeah, yeah. That's not the reason I'm not Team Ivy. Like, she's not a no. A bad person. For me, it just reads as intense ins insecurity. She's acting out of insecurity. Mm -hmm. So I, I almost just feel sorry for Ivy when she's doing those things like, wow, like she's so not at peace and in confident Inside. in her own self that she has right. to, you know, put other people down. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I just feel bad for her. <laughs> Do you feel I'd bad for Derek? He puts people down. <sighs> Just curious. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. He does. Don't. Um, I think we need to go to our commercial now, if we can, Ronnie, and then come back because there, there is a lot I want to talk about in the news and gossip world of this show. <laughs> After Buzz TV. Hi. I was once like you, a lazy, angry loner whose only joy was watching TV and surfing the net. And, like you, after I'd see one of my favorite TV shows, I'd be so excited and have so many questions that I'd actually have to talk to my douchebag co-workers about it at the water cooler. Then, I discovered AfterBuzzTV.com. AfterBuzzTV produces after-show webcasts and podcasts for TV series of all kinds, like post-game wrap-up shows for all your favorite TV shows. AfterBuzz TV hosts are industry insiders who break down episodes of shows, take calls from fans, and interview cast and crew from each series with over 60 different after shows, from Boardwalk Empire to American Idol to Vampire Diaries to Real Housewives and more. Now, after a night of TV, I can ignore my stupid co-workers, who I hate, and go straight to my desk and watch or listen to all my favorite AfterBuzz TV after shows and have all the TV fan interaction I need. Thank you, AfterBuzz TV. AfterBuzz TV. What do you want to buzz about? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what do you want to buzz about? Yeah. Smooth like I was earlier. AfterBuzz <laughs> TV News. Ronnie didn't care about our... No, he didn't. <laughs> <laughs> He's eager. It's late. <laughs> he's like, he's like, day. He's like chop Bang. to it. Yeah. I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't care about what? Nothing. Nothing. No, I nothing. Care. Hey, he obviously no, didn't we care. Know he care. didn't even hear. He does not even care. <laughs> I was multitasking, but no, I thought you guys wanted some news because Tamara we said do. she had some great we news. We do. Good I don't have great you. news. I have, I, have, I have things I want to talk about. Yes. <laughs> so one of the things that I found out this week is that Meg, er, Ivy's mother is going to make an appearance mm -hmm. two weeks from tonight and it is going to be the amazing Bernadette Peters. Woo! We love Bernadette. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm excited. <laughs> yes. Um, she's so fabulous. She's so talented. She makes me cry when she sings mm -hmm. every time. Aww. And what a perfect 
mother for Ivy. So say, talk right? about like feeding your insecurities. Have Bernadette Peters be your mom <laughs> and go into the same business that she's in. Yeah. Right. So that oh was good gosh. that they didn't show her or play her voice, you know, in the early episodes. Yeah. 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 This know, is going to be the of... first we see of her family. Right. Mm -hmm. And the only glimpse of it was when we got in, I think, episode two, where she was, she was talking on the, on the phone. Right. And you're and, you know, I was picturing some you know midwest housewife mom so like I. like karen's mom yeah. no right. it was so the fabulous <laughs> bernadette peters no wonder she has so much to prove she's right. living in the yeah. shadow of right her broadway mom yeah <laughs> mm -hmm. so bernadette play the the episode is is t entitled the workshop and she bernadette peters plays broadway star lee conroy broadway star Ooh. lee conroy so she's you know, that's so interesting now that we know that, looking at Ivy's um, legacy or her, the, the legacy that she's living up to. Right. You know, she, it like adds. you say, she's kind of in the shadow, but mm -hmm. the, it's like so many people who go into the business, show business, you know, with, when their parents are in it, some say that it's a benefit and a lot of them say that it is absolutely a curse mm -hmm. because they get compared to their parent mm -hmm. and it's so hard to live up to that and so hard to break right. through and be one's own self. Mm -hmm. Well, it'll be interesting. It'll be another layer to Ivy, mm -hmm. and we'll kind of see the psychology of it. But it's also interesting to see, um, you know, you hear stars today saying, oh, no, I don't want my kids in entertainment. Like a lot of the singers right. I've heard. Right. I've heard, I think, Christina Aguilera say that. Mm -hmm. I think, I don't, I don't want to throw out names and be wrong, but I've heard that, you know, in, in this day and age. So it'll be interesting to see. And what they say is that, Ivy's mom is going to be undermining her mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. her attempt to try and and pursue and maintain the role as Marilyn. Right. And oh my gosh, that's going to really create create some big waves and it'll yeah. make mm -hmm. for some interesting yes interesting stuff. I it's, think that's that's, it's that's just exciting. The smash curve is just <laughs> I is. can't wait. <laughs> it is. I want to watch the next episode now. Now, also, you heard about <laughs> another too. star who's coming on. Actually, well, Sarah. Heard, oh, it was Sarah. Oh, okay, and I heard a. It's. Yeah, yes. so we've talked about it, about it before. Are we talking about Uma Thurman here? Yes, yes. we are. <laughs> yeah, so yes. she's going to be on for a handful of episodes, mm -hmm. actually, starting mm -hmm. in a couple weeks mm -hmm. um, as a diva movie star yes. who comes um, to the show debating if she wants to be a part of it. We don't know if she's going to be in, you know, if she's vying for the Marilyn role or right. maybe she just wants to, you know, be part of the ensemble or what, but she's this diva a movie star that comes on to set. Does she have a character name or she's playing herself? She's She has a character name. Yeah, she I, does. I don't okay. recall it. But. And I was just saying related to that that I'd heard in the Rebecca news. Duvall is her character name. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Did you bing it? I binged it. I did. Um, <laughs> bing! bing. Um, and I was just saying... <laughs> Ronnie's here. Because bing is for doing. <laughs> yeah. And uh, what was I... Oh, no, I was just saying, because in related news, I'd heard that she's expecting her third child. Oh, so it really? it would be interesting in real life. So it would be interesting to see if they, you know, wrote that into the story or... Right, perhaps you know, it could mm -hmm. be a like an, crossover a character with Julia. Or, right. I'm just saying, that was another speculation. You were just said, all <laughs> about the predictions tonight, <laughs> aren't I, you? I said I was done, but... I had, <laughs> keep I some, on going, I some keep more on going. There. So the other, the other thing I want to talk about is that the ratings keep going down for this show mm -hmm. every week. And it's really distressing. Um, and part of, there, I think there are, are several reasons for it. Number one, it, it's hard to live up to the hype that, that they, and the press that they had behind it. Um, but also, you know, people were talking, we, people were comparing it to Glee. Mm -hmm. And saying it's Glee for adults, and I don't. I've I've said from the, our very first episode that I didn't think that was the case. Right. Mm -hmm. It's more like a drama that's got music, song, music, music in it, in it mm -hmm. you know. And and I I just don't think there's any comparison to Glee, especially because Glee has five or six or seven or eight songs in every episode, and this this show consistently has three. Mm -hmm. right. right. And that's actually a complaint of mine. I would like to see more music. Because what was the number you said was? Was it the pilot for Glee? There was had like eleven songs in yeah. it. I mean, that's ridiculous. <laughs> but yeah, and then it would be like watching a musical every week. Yeah, yeah. And <laughs> and you know, there's the criticism to that. A lot of people say Glee is just um, a, a whole bunch of a concert with a little bit of a story intertwined. Right. And so I, you know, there there needs to find a balance. But I, mm -hmm. I th there's such powerhouse voices on this show, mm -hmm. and an awful lot of characters 
Um, I would just like to see a little more music. Not, I don't want it to be looking ridiculous, mm-hmm. but but I enjoy the music so much. I think they mm-hmm. do such a good job with it. Mm-hmm. It, I think it's a good idea for using the Marilyn Monroe story as a as a framework for it. And they've got all this talent. Mm-hmm. I would like to see a little more, more. music. I'm like, do you think it's a production thing, a time thing, or what? I I I you know I don't know I. I think probably, I mean, I think it's a, a sp- very specific choice. I don't mm-hmm. think it's that they think they can't put more songs in. Mm-hmm. But if you're going to try and, because c- the other speculation is, are they going to come back for a second season? Right. Because they're going all the way to 15 episodes. One of the articles I read today was that they were coming up to wrapping the 15th episode. Um, and so, th- and someone on the production team said, that they got a t-shirt that's or a sweatshirt that said uh, uh, episode or season one of smash and and w- the person on the show was going oh my god we're gonna have to do more than one season <laughs> <laughs> um so it, my point being that if they're going to go into a second season you need to have that many characters and that many storylines mm-hmm. to take you past opening night which is mm-hmm. has always been my prediction of the uh, finale of season one that what do you do for season two you're not going to start a new show or Mm -hmm. or are you but you've got to have a lot of characters and things like that so anyway my my thought is they've got lots of characters they're doing a lot of behind the scenes so that they can sustain themselves for as long as they need to yeah and potentially another season. season but one of the criticisms that I was reading was it was actually very funny they were talking this person was talking about how the show had been pitched as a to, to the world mm-hmm. as a sorry I feel like I'm just yammering on you guys <laughs> no, no, stick no. with me I'm enjoying it and you too um, <laughs> it's quite, that, quite a monologue over I know, there. I know. <laughs> For one, I know. the Tamara one woman show I'm sorry <laughs> but I read a lot and I've been dying to talk about this for You're like five hours so so anyway I'll get to, I'll cut to the chase um, <laughs> producers are not very interesting to watch is basically what this person was saying and a lot of Smash is about the producers it's about all the behind the scenes mm-hmm. people doing their thing and where that makes for you know maybe maybe interesting storylines there's not a lot of real drama there there's not a, re- a lot of real expression and that's why this one writer whose name I can't remember anymore was saying that the show's not doing well because mm-hmm. cuz frankly producers are boring but i, I think people <laughs> need to be patient cuz i think we're seeing growth in that area we're seeing more comedy we're seeing more of the relationships for sure. developing mm-hmm. and you know it just needs some time right and you one of you was saying I think it was you was saying as we were sitting in there waiting to come in and, mm-hmm. and trying to keep our lips shut so that yeah. we didn't would <laughs> talk all of our talk before we came in here that you were you were basically countering me when I said I wanted more music you were saying no I want more character oh, Sarah, so oh, that was, was me. you yeah. you want more character yeah. so so that's you know that's sort of what we're getting mm-hmm. and right. well I agreed with you earlier when you said there has to be a balance mm-hmm. um I just want to, my, my only thing is, don't, I don't want it to be just throwing on a song for the sake of performing. Right. I'd mm-hmm. like it to be a part of the plot. Yes. Something to drive the plot forward. Yes. And that's why I sort of like smash more than Glee, because Glee is a lot more about the performances. That's true. That's true. Mm-hmm. Well, if we, you know, get someone on the show to talk to us about it from Smash, <laughs> maybe we'll hear behind the scenes. Also. Because it could be that it's on the cutting room floor. Maybe there were six seven songs in this True. episode and they had to you know maybe it's on the also DVD. for, for <laughs> True. glee the reason why they ha- probably have more songs it's because there's a variety of singers on that show who can sing on the show whereas with um smash there's only you know a handful of singers. there's only yeah. like karen ivy and michael swift right um who really can be the ones performing and maybe they don't want it to be like overkill on each character i don't True. i really I, don't know i think that would be that, I think that's fair to say. For yeah, sure. that could be one of the factors. For mm-hmm. sure. Well, okay. So do we have any more gossip or news? Some predictions, maybe. Yeah, let's move on to predictions. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. And now, you're after Buzz TV. Ronnie had his hand on it like... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Bang. Uh, someone else start. I'm going to... I I have nothing. Well, I was going to say if... Sorry. I should, did no, you, no, no, no. Okay. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> um, if there is going to be a season two, I'm predicting that Maybe, you know, after the season opener and maybe the whole season, I guess, of the show on Broadway, maybe they'll show them kind of coming to L.A. or, you know, maybe experiencing a new city, oh, new okay. people, new cast. You okay. Know, you know, how like 90210 and some of the other yes. shows kind of introduce new people. And that helps it, you know, keep 
keep it keeps it new. I can't mm-hmm. even speak. It's like past midnight. I know. But We're tired. <laughs> um, and that's just one of my predictions. I think that could be interesting. Okay. And hopefully they renew it. Okay. Sarah, do you I any just keep thinking about what's about to happen. I know. Between Julia. You're just, oh, you're just thinking about nakedity. <laughs> I, I repressed it already. <laughs> yeah, that's that's the only thing I'm thinking about. Obviously, there's going to be lots of drama in this next episode yes. for actually everybody. I don't think there's one character that doesn't have drama going on for next episode. Yeah, well, now so. that we're really getting into the characters and, and know where they're coming from, this is where the drama can really start to happen mm-hmm. because they don't mm-hmm. have to give us so much backstory. With That's what we've been doing for five episodes. Mm-hmm. Now we get to do really, you know, go to the races mm-hmm. and see what's going to happen with right. everybody. So I can't wait. I know. I don't really have any predictions. I just think it's going to be really start to be getting really, really, really exciting yeah. from here I on out. I hope people tune in I know. now to yeah. see how awesomely I know and I tell people all the time to watch the show. And I want to tell our listeners to please write comments on um, our Facebook page. Also, is it on our iTunes? iTunes is where yeah. we want, yeah. want yeah. them to iTunes. write comments. Mm-hmm. Questions, comments, any feedback that you have. We'd love to hear from you, and it really helps us out if you do write comments. So write comments on our iTunes. Um, and you can find Sarah on Twitter at Sarah Mendoza. That S-A-R-A with an H. With an H. Mendoza. M-E-N-D-O-Z-A. <laughs> and Kendra is at Kendra Cavasel, K-A-V-A-S-E-L-E. I can't ever spell her last name. <laughs> you can find me at Tamara Jewelry on Twitter. Also, my website uh, is TamaraCentral.com. Oh, my God. I can't even believe I forgot my own website, TamaraCentral.com. <laughs> That's okay. Ronnie is at Ronnie Jr. Media. That's right. And make sure you guys are supporting a lot of the good stuff going on with Maria. Uh, we're a podcast. Well, she just did the... The podcast for Adam Carolla, so search that online as well. And yes, those comments on iTunes are huge for us. Yeah. So we appreciate yeah. that. Tell us they what really you help. think. Yeah. And why wouldn't you want to listen to this about. great great yeah. show about Smash? Smash is on the verge. We <laughs> wanted to make smash. it. So we do. Yeah, you guys we do. do a great job yes. rocking it out. We're we want fun. season two. We, we do. want a season we two. Do. To happen. It's up to us to make it happen. Team season two. <laughs> exactly. All right, we will see you next week for Smash. Thanks for joining us. Thanks, everybody. From (laughs) Bing.com, executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other After shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz Buzz you later! (laughs) The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.